7. And the place is Bethany, and the time is A.D. 30. And the golden text is, I am the resurrection and the light. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. John 11 and 25. And today's lesson outline is the tomb. John 11, verses 17 through 19. And the hope, John 11, verses 20 through 23. And the rather re re reassurance, John 11, verses 24 through 27. Today's aim fact is to relate the events leading up to the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Principle, present Jesus as our resurrection and life, an application to teach that if we believe in Jesus, we will experience the resurrection and the life to come with him. And at this time, we'll break up the individual Sunday school groups. And we have today one. Be back at 945. Someone say 945. 945. You are dismissed. A uh, very good Sunday school lesson. Uh, I think like for the last two Sundays, we've been in the book of John. Oh, really? uh, very good. And I, I like to read and I talk with a lot of people. They tell me that they like to be a part of Sunday school. So, in other words, they like you to see if they have any comments on it. I didn't realize that was that important until someone told me that. I was just doing that out of my heart, but people told me they like it. Uh, I'll read verse 11, verses 17 through 19. And it said, and when Jesus came, he found that he, had, that he had laid in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was now unto Jerusalem about 15 furloughs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now, uh, verse 17, if you read a verse, I'm saying that when he came to Jesus, he found that he had lain in the grave for four days. As I was reading the Sunday school lesson, uh, Jesus didn't get, wasn't in a hurry to get there. That's right. Right. And so sometimes we are impatient when things don't happen on our terms. Amen. But before we get started, I'm going to let you know that Jesus is always on time. Yes, sir. Amen. And said, and I said, it, so basically it was saying it was about two miles away. Right. So I didn't really get the understanding because it said it would take him a day to get there. But maybe there are a lot of hills and things. <laughs> but nevertheless, I kind of said, not for me to understand why. It was for me to believe that it did happen. And Great. so, anyone have a comment on verse 17, 18, or 19? Well, deep. I want to go back to what you said about Jesus not being in a rush to get there, right? We we don't find out till 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 later on, but we understand that back then the culture was, you know, once you were in the ground three days, you know, that meant you was gone. You was you you was gone. And so as we go through the lesson, we start to learn a little bit more. We see at time. But Jesus was, everything that Jesus did, he did with a purpose. Right. Even though we didn't understand it, there was a reason behind it. And then as we move closer to him, even today in 2023, the closer we get to him, he'll start to reveal what he was doing all along. And so that's what we're going to talk about as we move forward. Amen. Like what Dick Maris said, as we get further into to the lesson, we'll understand why. But it's all for God's glory. Amen. And so we, you know, we have to understand why things are happening. Just like uh, in, in anything that we do, if we don't understand why this is happening, then we need to find out why. And so Jesus could have spoke that into existence, you know, before Lazarus, you know, we could he could have spoke that. But when he do things, it's not, we are, what it says, we are not on his uh, schedule and he's not on our schedule. And we have to just be patient and wait and believe that it's going to happen. And so there's uh, 
uh, as I'm reading it, that many Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. And so it tells me that was a big, they had a lot of friends. Yes. And so Jesus was one of their friends. Amen. So they had a lot of friends that, you know, when someone dies, your people come around you to comfort you. And so <coughs> at verse 20, it said that Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. And so as I was reading that uh, in a previous uh, chapter, uh, it was reversed. You know, uh, uh, Martha, <coughs> she was the busybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's the one who stayed at home. Mary was the busybody. And, you know, there was a lot of complaints. Why did this and that? And Jesus told him that, you know, you see me all the time. You know, you, you got plenty of time to do this and do that. But you don't you don't see me all the time. You see your friends all the time. So when you see me, you need to take time out and make special occasion for me. Uh, we are uh, for everyone that just joined us. We're in uh, John uh, chapter 11, verses 17 through 27. And right now we're on verse 20. So, uh, Sister Sandra, if you have a comment, then would you like to add on, from uh, verse 17 to there where, page 17, where you just, uh, where Jesus, uh, where Mary and, and uh, Jesus comfort Mary and Martha. Amen. Okay. Verse 21. Do you have anything on 20, Pastor? Yeah, you know, this is interesting. Oh, sorry. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You know, this is interesting because, you know, this deals with the resurrection. And, you know, Jesus wasn't in no rush to go and see about Lazarus. So this is what this this is almost this is classified as one of his greatest miracles. Yeah. Allowing someone to come back from the beyond, wherever that is. Amen. And, and you, you, you see that um, he's just trying to make sure because late earlier, you know, in the other part, let's just talk about that. This was done in, that the glory of God may be revealed unto us. Right. And, you know, he, he, he stays away. He, it, it's as if, I think the point I'm trying to make is that the things that worry us, concern us, don't worry God. Amen. You know, and things that we, we fret about, things that we get upset about, things that, that keep us up at night. You know, Jesus goes sleep on the boat with the storm raging. <laughs> he's trying to, he's trying to, Help us understand that if I am going to trust in him fully and to follow him fully, this is the way I should do that. You know, try to just make sure that I, I'm, 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 I, I model his pattern that he gave us when it comes to situations that arise in our life. Amen. What he said, think that worry us, don't worry Jesus. And don't worry. Jesus goes to sleep. And I used to think about things all night long that I couldn't do nothing about. So what's the use in worrying about? And so we have to put it uh, in Jesus' hands. A very good point from our pastor. Does anyone else have any comment before we go to verse 21? It says, verse 21, it said, Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, uh -uh. if thou had been here, my brother had not died. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, some people are saying that she was questioning uh, the writing. Maybe she might have questioned it. But I was reading that she knew what Jesus could do. Right. She had witnessed some of the miracles. So she wasn't being, as, as we would say, sassy. Right. Uh, she was saying, hey, I knew if you, was, if you were here, this probably wouldn't have turned out this way. Right. Amen. But as I was saying, I believe, he didn't have to be there for it to turn out that way. You got a microphone. Thank you. Praise him. Praise him. So I like what you said when you said she wanted him there because she knew he could heal. At this moment, she didn't know he could raise the dead. He said, I'm going to show you something. Amen. A good point. Uh, Sister Cassandra said, she knew that he could do miracles. She knew that he could heal. But she, she hadn't he known nothing about raising from the dead. That. And as we was reading it, you know, they said we all have faith, but uh, if something like that, 
I believe that I would have probably believed that it was that went quiet. You know, I wouldn't that save that long. I would I'll probably believe the same way it would it could right. happen. I'll be honest with you, I just believe it could not happen. Right. But the faith now that I've grown in the church, I believe that things can happen. Some of the things that uh, 11 years ago that I didn't think was possible have happened. Right. Great Amen. Pat, you got a comment? Yeah, I like, I, like, I like what you said about that, is that our faith, you know, God always wants to challenge our faith. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, Martha believed that, that he was who he was, but but yet again, there's another aspect of God that God's getting ready to show them. Right. And I think that's what it came with us. Is that you know? Oh, I believe God. I got this. You know, He's doing this for me. But then something arises that pushes me to my limit. Right. You know, and um, uh, I think that's what God does. He grows us. We go from glory to glory, from faith to faith, and right. just shall live by their faith. Right. You know, and, and he, he pushes us. You know, until you know, until he sat until not till we're satisfied. <laughs> 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 because you know we're you know a lot of us. Yeah, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us, yeah, a lot of us are when we get to get in the church and get to a certain place in the church, we good. Yeah. You know, right. I was good to be in the sound guy. I was, I was happy. Well, I had two feet in the church. I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm so glad. But then the Lord says, No, you need to come up a, a little bit higher. Like, I ain't doing that. Y'all laugh because all of us have been there. Amen. All of us have been there. It tells us to come up a little bit higher. And, um, you know, we have to, you know, the Lord helps us get there. But this is what he's doing with Martha and Mary. Right. Like she, like this is said, you know, you know, I can understand he's a healer, but guess what? Now I'm going to show him to do something greater that's and better. Right. Okay. And, and, that, and that's the aspect I think the Lord's trying to, to you know, even through COVID, Deke, you know, the Lord, you know, you say it all the time, you know. You know, we, we kept church open. You know, that, that that made us as a church believe God the more. That's right. You know, and now we're coming out. So now we can we believe in God for New York. And now we right. believe in God Come for, on. you know, he, 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 he keeps helping us. You know, and sometimes our flesh, praise him, don't want to go. Come on. But Amen. by the spirit of Christ, we're able to move in the things of God. Amen. Amen. I have to think back what Pat said. He pushes us and we grow. Uh, and it said that sometimes our flesh is set in one place and we don't want to go any further. I, everybody know my testimony. I was satisfied with going to pick people up in the van. And then one day passing, talking about being the deacon. I said, whoa. And now it's with further path to deacon, <laughs> which is being superintendent. Amen. But as they said, the Lord pushes you. And part of the thing is that we don't want to do it. That's part of it. That's part of the reason we don't want to do it. We're comfortable. I call it you in your comfortable zone. Yeah. And you feel placed like that's my seat right there. That's all I'm gonna do is sit right there, clap a few times, and dance. <laughs> don't ask me to do anything exceptional right here. Amen. For everyone, I thank everyone for coming in. What you just joined us. We are in the book of John, uh, chapter 11. Or in, we're right now we're on verse 21 and uh we feel free to uh comment uh if you have to you got something so when i heard pastor to talk about the growth right you know you, you, you're comfortable in your comfort zone if, if god would leave you there you'd be happy right but he challenges our faith he also challenges us to grow that's what it is if, if we're ever going to grow to become what he wants us to become, he knows that the level of faith you have at that time must increase. And think about it, it's a change. When, when a child grows, all of them grow. Their ears grow, their head grows, their brain grows. Come on. Their legs get longer, their arms get longer. All of you must grow. So for God to bring you into where he wants you to be, all of you must grow. That means your faith has to grow. Your contentment has to grow. Your holiness has to grow. Your dedication to God has to grow. Your loyalty has to grow. The fruit of the Spirit has to grow in you. you all of you have to grow. Not just your faith, but he starts probably with your faith. So, so years ago, you know, I was, when my children were very young, I wasn't even thought about it. Um, my older children were very, very young. They were like two, three, and five. 
I came upon, uh, I, I heard a sermon, and, and they were talking about the gifts of the Spirit, right? And at the very end, Paul writes, but covet, covet, he said for you to covet, that means desire it. Covet earnestly the best gift. Mm. And so I said, oh, what do I think the best gift out of all those gifts? What's the best gift? I don't know what I with the gift of faith. And the only way God's going to give you more faith is to challenge it, like Pastor just said. And he does. He challenges our faith. And I'm good with that. If that's what I want, I figured faith was the best gift because if I had the gift of faith, I could believe in all the other ones. <laughs> that's, where, that's where my brain thought. And that's where it still thinks, right? And so he does challenge my faith. But while he's challenging my faith, he's also he's also growing me into becoming to become Michelle Obama, to becoming into becoming the saint he wants me to be. Now we've not arrived, none of us have. We've not arrived, right? We all have growing to do. And so when we get to the point where we feel like we're comfortable, that's a dangerous place. Amen. Because you start to stagnate. And when you stagnate, you start to stink. <laughs> Mold grows on water that does not move. Am I right, Pastor? You scientist. <laughs> Amen. I like what Sister Cassandra said, that we all have to grow. We all have to grow all aspects of our body. And what she said was well, at the end, and she said that when we get satisfied what we are complacent, stagnant, that is dangerous. That's right. In other words, okay, this is as uh, far as I need to go. Right. You can never, ever learn what, everything you need to know out of here. Right. Because you'll never you reach the height can't of do death. It. I mean, it seems logical right. because you got a, a master's degree or something that they but it has nothing to do because it has to be revealed to us at a certain time. Right. And so you cannot get complacent uh, at one position uh, in the church. You have to say, okay, at some point you should be growing. If you've been here 11 years and you're in the same place you were 11 years, there's something wrong. Right. I don't criticize anyone, but everyone had to call it. But the Bible says we, have, we all have something a guilt. Whether we use it or not, we say we don't have a call. We all have the guilt. It could be speaking to people. That's a guilt. Yeah. But not everyone knows how to talk to people. Amen. Dick, I know you had your hand up a couple of times. Um, you know, I'm listening and I'm paying attention. I'm looking at the word here. And as we're looking at 22 and 23, but I know that even now, Whatsoever God will pass to God, God will give to thee. Jesus said to her, thy brother shall rise again. You know, when you look at that, she's in a state of, of potential confusion. She's angry. She's emotional. She's a lot of different things, right? Because we're human. And we go through this when there is loss in our life. And then here comes Jesus to tell her, that your brother will rise again. How do we equate that to now? How does that apply to my life right now? How that applies to us is very simply, death does not separate us from God. It's sin that separates us from God. So in right. essence, if we know who Christ is, if we have been repentant, we have been baptized in Jesus' name, we have been filled with the Holy Ghost, right. that is the rising again later on. Because death is, this is just our physical body that's going away. And Jesus is simply here. He, he's speaking to Martha there, but he's also speaking to us right, right now to, to show us that in order to rise again, there are some things that we have to do. But he was doing it and still showing in a physical manner of what was to come. And I love how Jesus does that because, again, remember, he only walked the earth 
uh, in his ministry for three and a half years. So he was doing things both naturally and spiritually, but they had to understand it. And so if we, as saints of God, take heed to what he did and how he did it, we can start to apply that to our lives today. Amen. Amen. Good comments from uh, Deacon Murray. You know, I, I was reading it, Deacon, he was talking about, uh, my, she, she asked that question, uh, she said, uh, she wasn't sure what he was talking about, that her son would rise, her brother would rise again. Right. But if we revert back to the Sunday school lesson, that it said that she should have known because she had witnessed some of the miracles that he had performed. And so I guess sometimes, even though as Sister Cassandra said, sometimes we witness some of the things, some of the things we just don't have the faith in it. And I believe that that was just one of those things that uh Right, rising up from the dead, she didn't have that faith, even though she had witnessed uh, some of the uh, miracles. Anyone else have a comment on that, uh, Brother Dustin? Praise the Lord, Church. Praise the Lord. Well, verse 23, I was getting ready. I was waiting for this. Verse 23, come on. If I can say something. Well, we just got, like, like everybody said, I agree with everybody. We just got to ask God for help. I mean, we can't be afraid. Sometimes I think we're scared. We are scared to ask God. Because I, I, I know I am sometimes. Because I get kind of in a moment, you know, I get sidetracked. Mm -hmm. You know, but we got to just think. We got to, you know, we just got to step back and just say, we just can't be scared of him because, um, and we got to be patient with him. Like, like Deke said, we got to be patient. Because if we don't be patient, then it comes a little on um, that one. On your shoulder or something, and then he's gonna say, "Oh, you're not. You, you know, you're really not gonna be patient, huh? So I got you, though. But you can't let him. You can't let him run your life. But what I'm trying to say, you can't be scared to just ask God for help, and you gotta be patient because if you ask God, then He will come through. You might not know it, but He will. Just be patient, and He will come through. Just don't be scared." Okay. Fear. Uh, fear handicaps us, and Bible says that God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and atonement. And, and, and let, me, let me pile on to that. So you can't be afraid to ask God. That's that's, that's brother. That's, that's what I think he's getting across. That's right. Don't be afraid to ask God. Jesus said, "Ask and it shall be given." Amen. He also, and then and then the writer said in the New Testament, "You have not because you ask not." Uh -huh. So where does fear come in at? I'm not afraid to ask him for nothing. I'm serious. If, if something needs to be fixed around my house, Lord, I'm going to need you to fix that for me. Because when you're asking him, he, that Holy Spirit inside of you will show you where you're going wrong in, or where you're right at, or how much faith you have. you got to open up your mouth and ask him. So that way, he can guide you. He says, well, you know, maybe I'll give you a new one. But if I had never asked him to fix it, he his spirit wouldn't tell me that. Because I'm afraid he even broached the subject with him. He said, okay, you scared, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you have that. That's why the Bible says faith has a fear and has torment. Fear will torment you. I don't understand why people like horror movies. Why would I bring horror into why would I bring fear into my life? I got enough of it already. Exactly. Why would I do that? <laughs> why, would I tell my, why would I show my children horror films and then they scared at night? Why would I do that? Amen. Fear is torment. Why would I show them my fear? Amen. Why would I show them my fear? You cannot get me to watch a horror movie. You can barely get me to watch, you know, a suspenseful movie. I don't even like them because fear has torment. And, tor and fear can paralyze us. I don't need to be paralyzed in the game. I thought you were going to comment on something.
God gave him direction. You know, he, he put it back on God. He, you know, he had That's God, right. and God, and then God said, you know, mm -hmm. speak, speak to that situation. And, and he didn't speak to it just once. Right. He speak to it to either three or four times right. in order for it to come to complete fruition. Right. And, you know, sometimes when we get in situations, I think we don't talk enough. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes we, we're good with what God does the first time. But God's not done doing what he wants to do because he's waiting for us to say something else. Uh, the other instance was when the man, when Jesus touched the man, blah, he said, I see, I see, I see men as tree, you know, and Jesus had to hit him the second time. <laughs> you know, uh, so so and then we get the story of the unjust judge. That's right. With the with the woman. And she came, she kept asking. She kept asking. And so, you know, uh, that tells us that in our flesh. We get weary and ask for God. Uh, we, we, we said, Lord, well, we've already asked you about that. But the scripture has clearly stated in those in just those three, three examples that I gave that, that if something hasn't happened in your life, okay, if something hasn't happened in your life that, that, that you believe, according to the words, should take place, ask the king. That's right. And, and then, then, then it doesn't take nothing away from us to ask. That's right. You know, and like you said, if, if you have not, because you ask not, I didn't say ask once, but you got to keep keep seeking the Lord that He may be found. Call upon Him when He's near, and watch God do something great. You know? Ask is also a source of humility. A lot of times we want to ask because we ain't humble enough to ask. ask. Well, He knows. Well, He. <laughs> yeah, the Bible says your Father knows you have need of these things, but you still need to ask Him. Open up your mouth, okay? So, so um, His mother said, right? His yes, mother said, hold on, just. Just bring it in to get us all the floors, all yours. Mother said, right? My children need to eat, but I don't know when they're hungry. They got to have them. I'm hungry. Oh, you need to eat now? I got the food ready. But you have to have the Oh, you must, not be ready. you must not be ready to eat, so I'm just not going to force you to eat. Well, come on. Same thing with us. Same thing with God. You have to have the right now. Oh, he knows. Yeah, he knows you need the Holy Ghost. He still said you need to ask him for it. See, there's, there's a humility in him. Some people don't want to ask because they're not humble enough. That they want some things to just come to them. Like, I mean, what does that even mean? That, that's, a, that's a spirit of arrogance. It, 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 it's pride. And you keep asking until he say, don't talk to me about it no more. God actually told me that. He said, don't talk to me about that no more. I told you. I have no other answer for you. I've given you my answer. Don't talk to me about it. He told me that. But I talked to him about it. Talked to him. He got tired of me talking to him, just like he did Moses. And I knew it was scripture. I knew it was the Holy Spirit because it's happened before. He told Moses, don't ask me no more. Remember? Moses kept saying, can I go over? He said, look, I'm going to let you go up there and look at, look at the land and let that suffice you. Don't ask. Don't. We're not going to bring this up to Moses. And he told me the same thing. I was good with that. Because that's the word, right? But I kept asking. What uh, so this thing, uh, fear of asking, uh, what Pastor talked about the unjust judge, she right. kept asking, and then the judge got tired and he granted her wish. Right. And uh, then uh, uh, Ezekiel was talking about the valley of the dry bones. Right. It just didn't appear that these bones would ever live. Uh, a friend of mine always made a statement of, if you don't ask, he said, uh, Closed mouth, don't get fed. Hello. Come on now. I don't know you're hungry. That's right. So you better say something. Come on. Same thing with God. You know, even though he knows all our thoughts and everything, he wants us to talk to him. Exactly. So, man, this is getting good. I, I, this is good. <laughs> if anyone don't have any other comment, we're going to move to verse 24. I think Every, Sister Queen, can you have a comment? Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Sister uh, Queen, okay. I was thinking um, uh, when people uh, pray to ask God for whatever they want, it has to be something that they're mixed up in or confused about or it's just something that, you know, that's making them afraid. And they don't know how to ask. But in a situation like that, you're not where you're supposed to be or you don't think you're deserving or whatever. Just ask the Lord to help. Help me and whatever. Mm -hmm. To get myself right. Um, you know. Um, 
whatever the situation is, Lord, help me and heal. You know, you don't have to go any further than Lord help. He knows where you need help. Right? Amen. And if you believe that, um, you know, he's going to help you, even though you didn't ask, did not ask, he can still bless you with what you need or what you want. Amen. But just as long as you ask and, you know, like I said, like, help me. And you don't have to go any further than that. He knows what help that you need. Amen. Good comment from Sister Queenie. Just ask for help. You know, humble yourself. Ask for help. Now, don't quickly to say you can't do something. Ask the Lord to help you. Uh, he said he would not put more on us than we can bear. And so all we have to do is just ask him. Just uh, I, I call it, don't take the easy route. I'll say I can't do it, throw the flags up. Because uh, I, I just think I could do this. Really did. But here I am. Yeah, yeah. So just asking for help. Uh, very good comments from everyone. Uh, verse 24 says, Martha said unto him, this is something that I believe everyone could comment on it. I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And so I guess I better read 25 also. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he leave, live. And so Martha was talking about the, uh, the final day, the end time. That's what she was talking about. And so that wasn't not what Jesus was talking about. He was telling you that I can raise him right now. And yes, I understand what you're talking about, Martha, but I'm not talking about it then. I'm talking about right now in this present. I know, Dick, you got your mic out there ready. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he got his mic locked up. Okay. <laughs> she's just holding it, but, uh, but since she called on me. <laughs> But yes, but, but that's exactly what I was alluding to earlier, right, where, where Jesus was always making examples. He had to do that for them to see. See, we have the word of God. We can read Old Testament, New Testament, and we have all of the written works that he left on record for us to, to, to uh, process, believe, or not believe. But they were living in it. Come on now. So, so what Martha was going through is not surprising. She she understood. Yeah, I I I got you, Jesus. Yeah, he's gonna rise again. But she was thinking later, later on. Later I, on. I got it. I got it. But see, but what I wanted to say was this: her emotional state at that time was that of that which we go through in the sense of sometimes when someone goes through loss, I am extremely careful on what I say to people because even if you're a child of God. The pain can be so great, sometimes you don't want to even hear the word right now. You just need a comforting shoulder. You need somebody to just hold you. And so we have to be careful to say, well, you know, people say things like, well, you know, he's in a better place or don't worry, God's got him. But at that moment, that's not something that they're even thinking about. But Jesus is trying to allow us to understand that even in the midst of your worst pain, if you stuck with me. Don't even worry about what's going to happen. Don't even worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about nothing else. The fact that they're gone, it's okay. Jesus said, I can do it now. So what do we preach? I can do it now. You can be saved from your sin right now. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, we'll do it right now. Amen. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We don't have to wait till tomorrow. Right. So Jesus is doing all of those things as an example, physically on the spot. Amen. Good comments from my own Deacon Mary. I like what he said that when someone loses a loved one, we have to be careful what we say to them. I remember once I was uh, late on in my career in the military, they, I, I was signed to a funeral detail, and I was asking everyone, what should you say? And I realized there was nothing, no set words to say. Right, right. There was no set word to say. And I realized then that was not something I wanted to do. Because <laughs> I, I, I can probably, like Dick and everything, say the wrong thing, not unintentional. And so that was a good comment from me. Does anyone have any uh, Pastor Brown? Uh, but he says, you know, you know um, yeah, Arthur was thinking about what 
And she was living where she was at. You know, she was thinking based on what faith she had. You know, yeah, Jesus, we know you're going to rise again. We know you're going to bring it back later on. And yeah, but I like the, the immediacy of the God we serve. Uh, he says, well, I'm, I'm that. He, you know, she, what he was saying to her, because, you know, she was distraught. She was a little upset. She, you know, her emotions had, had the best of her, you know, as we are when, when, we're, when we're in it, when we're in an emotionally compromised situation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's trying, and, and, but we see what God is doing. What God is doing is that he's, he, he, he's giving her, you know, facts and the word of God, Amen. you know, and, you know, that's what we have to do. You know, even, you know, I remember growing up and, you know, not being saved and, you know, I had a situation like that and give me a scripture. I don't want to hear no Bible. I want you to tell me how to fix this situation. He said, well, the Bible tells how to fix the situation. Just hear the word of God. You know, and, and you know, and I would go way mad and he'd go away smiling. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I come to the conclusion that what he was doing, he was right. And, you know, being a father now, you know, that's why I say, hey, look, man, look, dude, this is what it's going to be. You know, um, he go away mad, but this is what is right. But right. I, love, I love what he says is that, you know, again, you know, he says, I am, I am, I'm God. He's letting Martha know, I'm God. I am the resurrection yeah. and the life. Right. You know, because, you know, they had Old Testament. You know, they had, they had Genesis when yeah. God breathed into man, man oh. became a living soul. Oh. You know, you know, even Adam, Adam is a type of resurrection, even yeah. in the garden. Yep. It's a type of resurrection. Yeah. The Bible says that, that God made Adam out of the dust of the earth, oh. and Adam was made a dead man. That's right. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't, don't kind of think of that. Right. They, 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 they breathe through that too fast. Breathe fast. You know, fast. Adam was dead. He was dead. Dead, dead, dead. dead. That's yeah. right. And the Bible says God breathed into him and, then he, and he became a living soul. Oh. Praise him. Amen. So, so so even that type, that type of shadow, you know, as Marshall was talking about, he was like, he was, he was equating himself once again through the through the writer John that he's God and he's in, he's still handling all the situations we got going Amen. on. And and death, death being the last enemy. You know, death is called the last enemy. You know, he's letting them know that death. The last enemy still don't have no dominion over. Come on, and he says, you know, and he says, and he says, and all you gotta do is want to believe this. Believe, believe, believe. Don't, don't worry about how I'm gonna do it. I got it. I'm God. I'm gonna fix it. You know, and and and, and though he were dead, uh, yet shall he live. Though he were past tense, were dead, yet shall he current tense live. So he's talking about, you know, too many times. Watch this, church. Too many times we living in the past. Come on. In the past. In the past, dead stuff. When God wants to live in this current life we live right now, you know, by faith. You know, we, we, we have to stop. And I haven't said it in a while, but I'm going to say it this morning. We got to stop bringing up dead stuff Amen. that God already took care of in our lives. And we want to regurgitate it back up. Well, this is No, let, you know, any man being Christ, you say, what? New creature. But now faith is such a thing. What? Hope for it. So we got to stop living in the past. And start looking for what we're hoping for. Right. You know, I'm hoping for, amen, I'm hoping for a new church. I'm hoping for saints coming to the house of God. I'm hoping for the waters of baptism being thrown today. I'm, I'm hoping for, amen, it was what's already happened. You know, and, and, and that's where the Lord wants, that's, that's where he's trying to bring Martha to. Right. Martha, you dealing with this dead situation? I'm letting you know today, guess what? You ain't got to do that no more. I'm here. I'm going to make this thing alive in your life. Amen. As you said, we continue to think about the past. I, I don't like to think about the past that much. <coughs> a whole lot of bad stuff in my past. <laughs> so I'd rather not think about it. Uh, very good here. We have two more verses here. Uh, if there is no one else that would comment to, to uh, this on you. I'd like to bring our attention to something. She automatically misunderstood prayer. She said, oh, I know he'll, he'll rise at the last day. Just like when the, he told the Pharisees, remember when he said, destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up? Yes, and the Pharisees said, how can you destroy the temple that it took so long to build Herod's temple? Yeah. You didn't know what temple he was talking about. Right? So we automatically, but that's the flesh, right? We only think about what he's saying in our own context. And that's one of the things we should take away from this whole lesson is we have a way of consistently 
misunderstanding God. Misunderstanding. And so he told her the next couple of verses, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that liveth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Uh-huh. And then he that dies is still alive. I can bring him back. So he could have done it either way is what he was saying. He said, I'm all of that. And so when we come upon a situation, we should say, okay, God, do it however you want to. I'm not going to put you in a box. I'm not going to put you, you know, box you in. None of that. I'm going to allow that you know what you're doing. That's all part of trust, right? Part of the trust thing. thing. He can do it any way he wants. But when he doesn't come our way, we yeah. automatically misunderstood him. Yeah. We got to give him room to be God. And we just bring him out. Uh, Isaac did something for me the other day. He he actually put together a new media for me. I said, Isaac, you know what? You're going to need to know how to do those kind of things. Because when you become a dad, your child is going to bring you their toy and say, Daddy, would you fix it? They're going to leave it with you. And they're going to skip off like, hey, my daddy got this, right? My daddy, he the man, he the man. Well, you know what? God's so different. We bring our problems to him and say, would you fix this? Just show me. I get the phone. I can tell God, hey, look, I'm going to give you this. Show me what you're going to do for that. Amen. Let him do whatever he wants. That gives him room to work and move. Gives him room to resurrect things that need to be resurrected. And keep things dead that need to be done. Amen. Any, anyone else had anything to add to that? that you have? Yeah, you know, also I want to put an incident out there is that Jesus was putting death on notice. I know that's right. He was putting death and that he's coming for him. death on notice. He was coming for him because, you know, he was dead four days. So so death had him wrapped up. Right. And Deacon Murray said after three three days, according to the custom, the, the spirit lingered, but after fourth day, it's gone. You know, and death, 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 you know, took everybody. The grave took everybody. So he was putting death, hell in the grave on notice that he he's coming for him. Because when he calls Lazarus back, Lazarus somewhere to uh-huh. come back from. <laughs> you know? And so 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 he's putting them on notice that he's coming. So so even in the midst of what's going on, you know, if there's a greater, you know, uh understanding of Jesus yeah. doing with Lazarus, that that God's glory is greater than 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 death. And that and that he says in verse 26, whosoever lives it. And believe it, live it and believe it. Oh. Continuing in these things, living and believing, you know, in me shall what? Never die. And that and that's what it is, you know. Yeah, that's what Paul writes in Romans chapter nine. Right. You know, confession of the heart, the Lord Jesus. You know, but guess what? The confession does not stop. It's not one confession. Right. We're confessing him today. Right. We're confessing him Wednesday. Right. We're confessing when we meet on prayer. Right. We're confessing him all these times. And as we continue to do this, you know, and wait for God to show up, the Holy Ghost shows up. Oh, you know, the Holy Ghost has to show up. You can't keep talking about Jesus and the Holy Ghost not showing up. Come on. You know, <laughs> praise him. You, know, <laughs> you got you, you know, you should talk about Christ, the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost gonna show up, you know, and do what it does, you know. And and he that's why he said, and so he asked the question, and then do you believe it? And you know, we ain't got there, so I'll let you go ahead and be <laughs> a good comment when he said Jesus put death on notice. Yes, sir. Amen. And you know he he can do anything. All right, if we don't have any more comments, we got two more verses. Verse twenty six says, "Whosoever liveth and believe in me shall never die." Believest thou this? She said unto him, "Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, yes, sir. the Son of God, which should come into the world." Yes, sir. And so we know that. Two deaths, spiritual and physical death. Mm. But here we're talking about a spiritual death. If you believe, like that, that you have to believe, you live right, that he's saying, that without reading it, the Bible said that the, the dead in Christ will rise first. Yes, sir. And he says, that everyone's going to rise. Now, let's get that straight. <laughs> so everybody's going to have to own that day, going to have to be accountable. But the dead in Christ will rise first. Christ will rise first. And he said that we will be past the brown faith where we will be caught up Praise him. <laughs> in the clouds. Yes, sir. Amen. So anyone have a comment on 26 or 27? 
and marries uh, deep well, deacon okay, so, sorry uh key word whosoever it's a choice. People have to make a decision on their own to choose to want to live for them. So no matter how much word we preach, we ain't gonna stop. I, I'm gonna speak professionally and bonded. We ain't gonna stop preaching the word. <laughs> we ain't gonna stop. We ain't gonna stop teaching <laughs> Jesus Christ on, and him crucified. We on, We're man. not going to stop. Come on, come on, but we do have to understand that Jesus said, not man, Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. So stop beating up people. That's right. Start loving on them some Start more. Them. Giving them the word some more. Amen. Let God change them. Let God change their heart. What Martha went through, God still had to change her perspective. She had one perspective until Jesus did and said something and it changed. So we have to be the same way when we're dealing with our brothers and our sisters, with our mothers and fathers, our cousins, our grandchildren, our co-workers. We have to give them the same grace that God gave us. He gave us free will. He gave us free choice. And that word, whosoever, it's about them making a choice to come and want to walk with Christ. Yeah, good point from my own deacon where we said we have a choice. We all have a choice. And as this concludes our Sunday school lesson, I hope there's something was said to encourage someone. Yeah. And I uh, I'm gonna go over the practical points right quickly. So we have the number one says, uh, even in our death, we can fulfill God's sovereign plan and glorify Him. John 11, 17, and 18. And number two says, only Christians have a true hope that comfort and console those who mourn. Mm -hmm. Number three says, Christians vary in their reaction to the death of loved ones. Number four, that Jesus is with us even when we think he is absent. Praise and with eyes of faith that believes in the power of Christ to right all wrong is never in vain. That's good. And last one, that true faith in Jesus Christ is never a mere mental or academic exercise. It is a matter of life and death. And at this time, we're going to go ahead and get ready to go into our offertory. We have to get all that can give at least $5.00. We also ask that you support our scholarship fund. And <clears throat> we ask that, uh, and the only qualifications are that you attend Sunday school three consecutive Sundays in a row. So that way the pastor can sign off on it. Amen. Everybody ought to go to Sunday school.